Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Oki Surf and Turf Metal Detecting. It's Sunday, December, uh, September, <laughs> September 9th, 2018. Um, I'm back and doing some jungle hunting. And uh, I got Dave right over there. You can't see him. And speaking of Dave, uh, Dave and I had a good, uh, cool hunt last, uh, last weekend, which after this clip, I'll show you guys. Uh, check that out. But uh, waiting on Ernest to get here. We're gonna do some exploring, some new section of woods, and um, see what we come up with today. Pretty excited. Well, my first signal right here is a super gold, shiny, great seal button. Look at that thing, man. That's a little bit cuff button. And I normally don't find that little ridge like that on the back. Usually it's pretty flat, uh, pretty even. So, but man, that's some beautiful. Look at that thing. Nice. It is uh, Labor Day weekend. I'm hunting with old Dave over there. We're hunting an old farmhouse to start the day off. We got a full day of digging ahead of us. So I'm not going to show you guys the farmhouse. This is uh, exclusive permission. I dug up a piece of tin right over here. And uh, my second signal is about seven inches deep. And of course, it's going to be a Washington State tax token. These things are everywhere. But hey, I'll start with that. That's not bad for uh, my second find of the day. Well, it went about uh, 60 feet. Found a tax token, that first, the second signal, and then I dug a 41 nickel right after. And there's my second tax token for the day. This one's chewed up. Probably the reason why is uh, I'm right next to this old apple tree, and I don't know what it is, the acidic, acidity in the soil, but dude, every time I find a token by an apple tree, it's just trash. Oh well, that's cool. All right, well I got my first uh, relic of the day, pretty cool. First one I've ever found. Um, that's a buckle cover. Definitely goes with the age of this house, this homestead that was here. So you're... Now I got a good find, baby. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Man, just a little peep. And uh, you know, I'm trying to get used to my new TRX there. And I just couldn't pick, pinpoint it. I kept grabbing handfuls of dirt and you guys check that bad boy out. That is a little bitty like a diary key or a locket key. Man, that thing's beautiful. Woo, baby. All right. Right next to the same hole. Got another one. Man, look at the condition of these things today. Woo. Man. Another great seal cuff button. And there's one more in here somewhere. And I think it's about right here. But I gotta dig down to it. Sweet, I'll take it. That's a nice great seal cuff button. All right, Dave said he got his first button in the jungle. That's well, not his first, he- uh, Not my first. He's been digging up some good ones. <laughs> this is my buttonhole. <laughs> yeah, look how gold those things are that we're digging up. This is the only place in the whole fort where we've been digging cuff buttons that are shiny like that, every one of them. So, nice find, dude. Yep, thank you. And I was right, right underneath that root, right by the other signal. Another cuff button, another gold, shiny, beautiful one. Man, that thing's pretty. Yeah. Quit digging iffy signals, because all I'm digging is nails on the iffy ones. Yeah, there's a lot of nails. So, you guys, my, my original buttonhole was right down there. And, um, you know, up top of the buttonhole, I didn't... You know, there may have been a barracks right in here. There's a lot of nails, a lot of pieces of glass. But, uh, you know, probably five, six feet away from that other cuff button, I got another cuff button, another beauty. Another beauty. Look at that. Nice. Well, Dave and I have been trying to figure out what my next target is. It was a solid, like, 70, low 70s tone, which is not usually, like, something good. But check this out. It's like bimetal. There's like some type of bird. And it looks like a gold bird. And then some type of wing or something. I think this was part of a brooch or part of some type of pin. But check that out, dude. Look at the color of that gold. There's no way that that's not real gold. That's pretty awesome.
see something on the front, or is it just just, right. just corroded? Just just corroded. The back There's Ernest. Right. He hadn't seen Ernest in a while, and Dave said, uh, "I got a big disc. That's a hat pin. Great seal hat pin." Oh, come on, zoom in. You can't really tell. Yeah, that's an oldie. That's good. 28. That's an oldie. Ernest has got the first collar disc for the day. World War One. This just says U.S. No numbers. I have not found one of those. Oh. I'll zoom in in there. Oh. Dude, that is a World War One collar disc all day long. Yep. Nice find, dude. Thanks. Woo. Man, you see the jungle we're digging in? It's awful fun. All right. It's kind of scraping. I can't really move because the blackberry bushes. I'm kind of burrowed down in this little tunnel. And I got something right here. It's like a cuff button. That's an old, that's a World War I. Tell by the edge, tell by the make of it. I've well, been clearing blackberries with the jail digger slash machete. Uh, works good, by the way, Jeremy. Um, I have to get some new batting tape, though. It ripped pretty good. Hey, I got this down in the bottom of this hole. Yeah, look at my arms. It's awesome. And uh, it's uh, made of aluminum, but I'm thinking some type of token. Man, look at that thing. I don't know what it is. Now yeah, to get it cleaned up. Sweet. See something on there. Cool. About the size of a half dollar. It was given a half dollar signal. Another cuff button. Pretty deep. I had to go in the roots in that one. But, uh, yeah. whew, I was shaking. Kind of. I'm still shaking about this. Mm -hmm. um, probably the oldest military relic that I've ever found out here at the fort. Um, check this out, guys. Whew. You guys know what that is? See those little prongs? Ernest is the one that told me about these. He found one before. That's a infantry, uh, that's pre, that predates the collar disc. What they did, these little metal prongs would go into fabric and they'd bend them over in the fabric and, um, oh man, check that out. That is, that's the best find I've had in, in a long time this year. Man. All right, it's lunchtime. And as it was lunchtime, I heard Dave do the woo-hoo. Was that Dave? I think so. What'd you get? Awesome. Just found a surface fine color disc. What is it? That's a good sign. All right, so I'll tell you guys a story about this and then I'll show you. I know some of you guys have never seen what's in there. Um, when I was over hunting in Idaho a couple weeks ago with uh, Spud Digger and Tough Run and all those guys, uh, I decided I was going to try something and I just so I went down to the surplus store and I bought myself some MREs and I, I, I hadn't really had much of them before. But over that weekend, man, it was so much fun and just I had a blast with it and so I was like I got this idea I was like you know what I uh um what if I brought an MRE with me while I'm detecting on these long days and uh just do like a little MRE review and show you guys what these things are all about so um I've already found out one thing I know if I do when I do this again I'm gonna I'm gonna buy one of those mesh trays those little stainless steel mesh trays to um that way you know it's a lot easier to gonna handle everything because once i once i pop into this thing you guys will see what i'm talking about so I, I think at least once a month in my videos i'm gonna be doing this i'm gonna uh, in the what's in there and uh you can take my word for uh what it tastes like so there's some definitely gonna be some interesting stuff in this uh mre is all mres have some pretty interesting stuff but i, I really like them and I think what I'm going to do before we get opening this thing up, I'm going to put my black bag on there. There, there we go. Okay. So lunch today is going to be some uh, brisket, brisket entrees, 
gravy with seasoned beef brisket slices. Um, so that's going to be the main course. So uh, let's uh, see. Let's open this thing up and see what all's in here. And then I'll prepare it. And then I'll turn the video back on. And uh, sometimes these pouches don't open the way they should be. They should. There we go. Come on, baby. Actually, I'm going to have to get a, <laughs> a knife after this thing here. Hang on. We'll get the, this bad boy out. So, this is uh, my MRE spoon. And this is actually made by K-Bar. It's a spork. And then, you pop that open and there's a, a little serrated knife on the inside. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right get this packet out of here so here's the content there's all the contents all together this should just tear right it right open and let's pull these things out lay them all out and show you guys it's kind of cool that I'm doing an MRE uh, review out in the old military fort I know when this fort was going they had can C rations and whatnot so the first thing i got here is the irish cream cappuccino instant powder so basically you just rip the top off of that fill it up with water and uh i know ernest likes coffee i, I may make ernest some coffee on this so uh, he said it'd be nice all right so we'll set that aside here okay so we also got We got some osmotic cranberries, so dried cranberries. That ought to be cool. That ought to be good. And I got a pack of peanut butter. So I know the thing definitely feels like it needs to be kneaded up. There's a lot of some separation going on in that peanut butter. And next item we got is a wheat snack bread. So. Um, this is I like these. The, I did have this over there. It's a weird shape. It looks like they manufactured this bread to look like a piece of bread, but it's not a piece of slice of bread. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Here's the main course. This is going to be my beef brisket. I'm really excited to try it. And this is that's the main course. And this thing does come with a ration heater. So here's a a, a cardboard sleeve for that ration. And this one has a secondary course, or a side dish, au gratin potatoes. So we can put both of those in that heater and get them warmed up. So this is a flameless ration heater. And this is what the flameless ration heater is. Basically, I'm going to put my entrees in this bag and fill up to that line. And there's a chemical reaction that occurs, and it boils it. I mean, it makes it, it cooks it pretty quick. So I'll show you guys how that works here in a second, but I gotta keep, I'm gonna run a little faster here. Um, got some Tootsie Rolls. So, you know, if you think about these guys that eat these over while they're, you know, on duty, on tour, you know, I think a lot of this stuff in here, like the Tootsie Rolls, um, is a big morale booster. Okay, I got a big old pack of apple jelly. So I can put that on, uh, have some peanut butter and jelly on my uh, wheat bread, uh, wheat bread piece, wheat snack bread. Got a spoon, and then inside this packet here, this accessory packet, got some toilet paper. Hopefully, I don't need that this afternoon. Uh, we got some beverage base lemonade. That sounds really tasty. I'm gonna actually put that in my canteen cup. Got some chiclets. I heard some bad horror stories about the chiclets and MREs. I was told if you eat the whole MRE, don't eat that. Unless you want to be using some of this toilet paper. So, uh, and then got a moist towelette, which I'm going to use to clean my hands before I get to putting all this stuff together. And some iodized salt. So that's what's in this uh, brisket MRE. So I'm going to get back with you guys when I get it... Uh, when I get it ready to get going. All right, now it's time to put the entrees 
my au gratin potatoes and my brisket in this flameless rations heater. You guys can see I got uh, my peanut butter and jelly sandwich on this bread right here. Just fold that bread in half, have myself peanut butter and jelly. Got some awesome cranberries. I hadn't eaten any yet, but man, those things look super fresh. I think this uh, ration was made in 2017 by the date on it. And then I hadn't had Tootsie Rolls. I may give those to the to the guys. But uh, so start this ration. We're going to basically tear right here at the notch. You rip that right off. And you guys see the ration pad. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this thing up. This is the coolest part of the whole experience right here. You open that up. Since there's two, since uh, there's the ration pad. So since there's two ra there's two entrees in here, I'm gonna put one on each side. That way it it heats up properly. So I'm gonna slide that, keep that pad sliding up, and there's a reason for that. And I'll show you guys here in a second. So there's the brisket in one side, and here's my potatoes on the other side. We're gonna make sure that uh, that's firmly in there. And once I pour the water down to fill that line, it's, uh, we'll slide it down and I'll show you guys what happens. So, it doesn't take very much water at all. This is don't overfill. So we're right on the money. We'll slide this thing down in there. Now we'll roll it up. And you guys are about to see the magic. And then there's this little cardboard sleeve. This thing gets really hot. So it's kind of funny the directions say place on a rock or something. So uh, let's see, is it going to get hot? Come on, I don't want to eat cold brisket. Should start sizzling here pretty soon. I don't feel it getting hot. Yeah, it's starting to get warm. So I'm just gonna place this right here on the bag. That way it cooks. I was hoping to see you get you guys see some uh, some fizzing and stuff and hear that that, that thing heating up, but it's not impressive today. All right, I'll get back with you guys when everything's cooked, ready to eat. I just took these out of the pouch. So, get the dirt off of them. Let's open them up and see what uh, what di what lunch is gonna look like. Here's the brisket. Eh, uh, looks kinda like a uh, chopped beef. I'm gonna go ahead and use this for a plate today. <laughs> that sure ain't brisket like I like I eat back home. I know that, but uh, looks kind of soupy, kind of runny. Um, but smells absolutely delicious. I'm definitely gonna put some salt on that too. And then here's the au gratin potatoes. Oh man, that may be the best part of this lunch right here. Yes, check those au gratin potatoes out. Ooh, man. All right. Well, there's lunch. Ernest started ate a Tootsie Roll and he drank uh, the cappuccino. He said it was really good. So uh, I'm going to get mowing down on some of this stuff and I'll get back with you guys on uh, how it goes. All right. Lunch is done and, man, I got to say something, guys. It was freaking outstanding. Best MRE I've ever had. So. Again, that's menu number seven, the brisket entree on the 2017 MRE. Man, this brisket, while it looks weird, it's got some nice chunks of beef in there. These potatoes have whole pieces of potato, kind of like au gratin potatoes you would get at this grocery store. Peanut butter and uh, the beef kind of tasted like, uh, I'm full, I can't eat anymore. It's just like expanding in my stomach. <laughs> but, uh, um, 
you know that brisket it, it tastes kind of like the meat in a denty more beef stew it didn't really taste like brisket it just tastes like if you take a denty more beef stew take the potatoes out and the vegetables out and just eat the meat that's what it tastes like but it's really good especially when you've been out here hacking blackberries and hiking around all morning um all ground potatoes were excellent no complaints on that that was outstanding this peanut butter and jelly um man that's good that, that wheat bread snack is awesome and the dried cranberries are great ernest said the tootsie roll is nice and soft and this gatorade mix was freaking awesome so great lunch all right i'm gonna get back to digging bigger than a cuff button it does yeah we haven't been doing much since uh my lunch but dave's got something I'm trying to figure out if that's a cuff button what that is so it's uh maybe it is a it's coin it looks like a coin well, it's probably a memorial yeah that's what i was gonna say it's probably like it's gonna yeah. be a memorial i bet you got a i bet you got a weedy oh it's awful green i don't know it can be an indian nope it's a part of a button oh, i think it? i think there's a shank the expert. Yeah, it's not a button. That's a coin. What is without a doubt a coin? It's a crusty coin. I don't know. Let's see what it is. All right, guys. I'm gonna do the wrap up out here, and man, I have a surprise like you wouldn't believe. So. I started scrubbing on that, uh, what I thought was a token, and then I stopped immediately. Dude, this is a bucket lister. I, I, I can't believe I'm holding this in my hand, but I had to stop, and I need your guys' help. So the reason I stopped, you guys look at it, it looks pretty crusty, but I started seeing the serial number on the back. That's actually an enlistment number on the back. And, but what made me stop is this hole right here. You can tell this caked on tar crap is everywhere. But I saw, I don't know if I can zoom in on it enough. You can see the soldier's name on the top. And you can see US and there would be USA in the middle. There's a hole in the top, hole in the bottom. You can see, let's see the hole in the bottom. Man, you guys know what this is? This is a U.S. collar disc. I mean, this is a U.S. dog tag. This is a World War One, maybe even before dog tag. Um, but I need your guys' help with that. This is a bucket lister for sure. And jeez, man, definitely the find of the day. And I found some pretty awesome stuff. But how do I clean this? How do I get that that gunk off? Um, man, these are rare, dude. These are super, super rare. Anyway, if you know how to clean that off let me know all right so my next bucket lister i didn't even well it's not even beyond bucket lister i didn't even think it was i didn't even really know what they were i didn't know what they had before collar disc but i do now um uh, man that is uh something else that was probably used in the world war one era uh, according to Ernest, it was only used for a short period of time, like a year or two. Um, probably these things kept falling off. But, uh, man, that is just outstanding. That's, that's one of the best things that I found all year, for sure. Uh, my four beautiful Great Seal. I didn't clean those. All I did was wash those off in the water. That was it. That's how those came out of the hole. This is how they usually come out of the hole. These are World War One. That's a Great Seal coat button and Great Seal cuff buttons. Those are both World War One. And uh, that's my hunt of the day. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the MRE review. Please leave me a comment on what you thought about the MRE review. Um, maybe I could do uh, more than one a month. Maybe I could do one in every video. Um, it was a lot of fun. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys.